Hey everyone, we're doing exercise 15.1. Build the customer maintenance application of Ronex Visuals Basic 2015. And so we start by making a new project. Again, we need Windows Form App .NET Framework in Visual Basic. That should be in your recent templates. And we're naming this uh, your last name. Exercise 15-1. Make sure project and solution are in the same directory. Go ahead and hit create. All right, now we want to add a new data source. And we're going to hook up that database that we've been using. So you downloaded it last week. Okay, if we want to, you can show the connection string. It's going to ask you if you want to copy the database to your project. Yes, we want to do that. Save that string. What information do you need? We need all the columns in the customer and, table, and states tables. So we need customers and states. Hit finish. And then remember, go to the solution explorer choose the database, go to properties, copy the output directory, copy if newer. All right, that was step one. Step two, change the control that's associated with the state column of the customer table. Customer table, state column, we're gonna change that to a combo box. And then drag the customer's table onto the form so the detail controls are generated. So of course we need to change this to details before we do that. Drag it on there. And make it look like figure 15-8, which is over on page 517. All right, we've done this before. Take customer ID, make it read only instead of just city. Oh no, actually, we keep it that way. We're going to take state and zip and put them together though, like that. It's a little big for zip code. I'm going to make that a little bit smaller and then name. I'm going to take these three, get them to line up there. That's already lined up. And we need to leave some room for some additional toolbars in here. But we have something that looks like this right now. All right, then bind the state combo box on the form to the states table in the data source. And here we're looking at 15.2. So what we want is the state dropdown we want it to be populated with all of the rows from the state's um, data source. So I'm going to hit the smart tag. So once I click on the state combo box and hit the smart tag, I'm going to go choose the use bound, use data bound terms. My data source, where am I getting this from? I'm getting it from the state's table. So I opened up, oops, I opened up other data sources project data sources, MMA books data set, and chose the state's data table. What are we displaying? We're going to display, these are the fields in the data table. I'm going to display the state name, but I want the value, what gets saved as the state code. And then what's selected by default? By default, it is the state field of the customer's binding source. So when I pull up a record, if I pulled up my own record, the state, you know, would be, the state selected would say New York. All these other fields, the text gets filled in, but you need to change, you know, how does that drop down get populated? So that's what we did there. All right, still in step three, set the drop down style property to drop down list and set the data bindings text property 
to none. And that was step three. So test the application. If I run it, you see my first record is from Birmingham, Alabama. So Alabama is selected. And as I go through, the state drop down is set to the state that the person is from. If I choose this person, record number four, I can change Savannah, Illinois to Savannah, Georgia if I wanted to. All right, and step four, it says if, this, if the state that's displayed for the first customer is incorrect, it's because the customer's table is loaded before the state's table. Um, to correct this, end the application, switch the statements in the load event handler. Um, it's working for me, but I will show that to you. <clears throat> so if I look at the code, we need to make sure that states gets loaded before customers gets loaded. So if for some reason, when you run your application, the states drop down is empty, make sure you're loading states and then customers. Okay, we are on step six, add a parameterized query. And we're gonna call this uh, fill by customer ID. So I'm gonna select the customer ID, hit the smart tag, click on add query. We're gonna call this fill by customer ID. I'm gonna go into the query builder. And right now my query is just gonna select everything. What I wanted to do is I want to select it only where the customer ID equals customer ID. So this is a variable and our SQL variables are prefixed with an at sign. And then I have customer ID. If I click down into the SQL itself, you'll see that the statement is now selecting everything from customers where customer ID equals dot, um, at sign customer ID. So we're going to say OK. And make sure you have this named fill by customer ID. Hit OK again. And now we have another toolbar here that it says fill by customer ID. So I'm going to run my application. And I'm going to say four, fill by customer ID. And that only pulls up then customer ID number four. Um, all right, so we tested it. There's all these steps to go through on, on testing it and watching how it works and watching how it interacts with the uh, data set and such. So that would be steps really seven, eight, nine, ten, And I'm going to let you do that on your own. It's just really using the application. OK, now we need to add a cancel button to the binding navigator toolbar. and. We could add a button this way, but it actually wants us to use the smart tag on the binding navigating toolbar. Click on edit items. We're going to add a button. This particular button, um, I want it displayed as text. The text that I want displayed is cancel. And I'm going to call this button BTN cancel. And then we're going to take fill by customer ID. And we're going to rename that. We're going to name this to um, what? Get customer. And I'm just showing you another way to rename it, add buttons and everything. We're going to um, add a separator. And we're going to add another button. This one is also going to be set to text. The text on it is get all customers. And the name of my button is BTN get all customers. Um, all right, it looks like there we go. If for some reason your window is too small, just make sure your window is wide enough to handle get customer and get all customers. All right, now we're going to add the event handler to the click event of the cancel button. 
it says use the procedure on 15.7. Okay, so what that's saying is, you know, click on cancel, go to properties, go to events, click. But this is this is just a button. While it's a button in a toolbar, it's just a button. Just double click on it. And now you have the event handler for um, the cancel button. And I'm on page 515 to cancel and edit. Um, we're using the customers binding source dot cancel edit. And then we need to do the same thing. Well, add another event handler for get all customers. Where do get all customers go? Double click on that. And get all customers should contain a statement like the one in the load event handle that loads the customers table. So I'm going to find my base load. Here's the customer table. Bill, I'm just going to take that copy paste. If you look at page 515, uh, what they're doing is they're trying to do this and then catching any exception and displaying the error message. So if you want to enhance your application a little bit, go ahead and do that. And now this should this should work. I'm going to hit F5, run my application. At first everything loads. I'm going to say get customer 16. There's that one customer. Notice I can't go through because I only have one customer pulled back. If I hit get all customers, they're all loaded and I can jump through here. And if I'm making a change to something and hit cancel, that worked as well. All right, so make sure I didn't miss anything. Looks pretty good. I'm going on to step 14. Comment out the code for filling the customers table on the load event handler. So we're finding my base load and filling the customers table. We're going to comment that out. Remember to comment something when you have that line selected or if your cursor's on the line, hold down control and hit K then C, or you can hit the comment out selected lines button in your toolbar. Um, but we, what we do need to add to this is state combo box dot selected index is equal to negative one. So what this is doing when the application first loads, instead of having Alaska chosen, um, it's going to have nothing chosen. So I'm going to run this. Notice nothing is loaded and nothing is chosen in the dropdown. And now I can say I want customer 16 or I want customer nine or I want all customers. And I have my my application here. And while I'm using this, this this is a little tight. I think I'm going to take this box and just move it over this way a little bit. Um, just make this a little give that box a little bit more space. All right, better. And you can add data val validation error handling that's shown like it's shown in 15.8. Uh, but we don't have to do that. Something you could look at in 15. Dot, or 15.8, it shows you how to handle the fill by customer ID button when somebody clicks on it. Um, but Visual Studio automatically wrote that code for us. So automatically wrote the code that when you put, you know, customer 18 in here and click on get customer, um, it does that. And you can see what it's doing. It's running the fill by customer ID parameterized query that you wrote. Um, it's running that and it's taking the arguments, the customer's data set, and then taking the input, you know, what the person or the user typed in the form in that box, converting it to an integer and sending that to that fill by customer ID. Okay. Now we're going to add one more parameterized query to the form and this is fill by state. So I'm going to click on the smart tag again and you know it really doesn't matter which smart tag you click on when you add a query. I just I don't know for some reason I'm adding I'm clicking on the tag on the you know the same element. Actually I'm going to choose, purposely choose a different element. So I'm going to click on add query this one's going to be called fill by state. 
Again, going into the Query Builder, I'm going to make this window bigger. One of my pet peeves against Visual Studio is this window is always too small. And the state filter is at state. Click down here, you can see it rewrites the SQL. Say OK. Make sure my SQL is right. Make sure my query name is right. Fill by state. Click on OK. <coughs> and there we go. So if I run my application now, and I choose NY as my state and click on fill by state. Now I get 49 records. And as I flip through them, they're all people in New York, right? Because my query is select all those fields from customers where state equals whatever I filled in here. FL, fill by state. Now we have all Florida people. All right, that was uh, step 16. Step 17, we're gonna have to make this a little bit bigger. Add a separator at the right of the controls on the fill by customer ID tool strip. So right here we want a separator. Followed by a label, text box, and button that looks like the three controls in the fill by state tool strip. Then delete the fill by state tool strip. And then modify the code so the, the fill by state button gets the customer rows by state. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I wonder if I can take these three things. Can I cut? Yep, so I just hit Control X. I'm going to click here, Control V, paste. All right, so I just move those things, and I'm going to take this. Um, I'm going to leave that there right now. Um, let's see. Our label, text box, and button, well, they all look the same. This fill by state, I want to just I want to rename this. I don't like the fill by state. I'm going to call this get customers by state. I don't know what it's supposed to be. And let's see what this does. All right, so right now this doesn't do anything, this get customers by state, because Visual Studio thinks it's a new button. Really, it was the button I cut from down here. And if you look, we actually had this, we have this sub procedure which handled the old button over here. Okay, so I'm just going to take the code from this sub procedure because this one, notice it's not handling anything. There's no references to it. This is the old sub procedure. So I'm going to take the, the try, move it down here, delete that old sub procedure. And I'm going to take this tool strip. And delete it and then just do some housekeeping here move that up move that in actually if we have all this room I'll take this and move it over like that all right we're kind of happy with that hit f5 let's see what it does yeah now it's working Okay, um, that's it. So that would be all of 15.1. Um, once you're done, and again, you know, I skipped over pretty much steps seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Please do those steps. You get an idea of how they're working. And then if you wanted to add some error handling and stuff, um, you can do that as well. Otherwise, go ahead and zip it up and submit it.